Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Anne-Marie McEwen here on this Sunday, December the 2nd, 2018. It is 8 p.m. New York time. That's 5 p.m. Los Angeles time and 1 a.m. if you're in London. If you're in London, thank you for, so much for staying awake and uh, tuning in and, and joining us tonight. And if you're in Sydney, Australia, I believe it's noon there, so they're in the middle of uh, lunch, so to speak. But uh, wherever you are, we, we're wishing you a happy day and we're here to do our weekend daily dose of happy, and we're doing it as a Q&A. We've had a lot of success, Anne-Marie, with Q&As lately. People are really liking them, so we're doing them more and more. Plus, it's a lot easier than coming up with a topic, I have to admit. So there's, there's like the added benefit, you know. <laughs> right, right. Well, I think that's great. I, I love Q&As because I love to help people answer their questions and talk them out, even if I don't know the answer. Just mm -hmm. talking them out is very therapeutic for it's like fun. everybody. It's so. fun. It really is. Yeah. 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 It and is. and usually the thing that I'm finding is most often there's enough in the uh the question or the the, the problem that it kind of gives you a clues what to 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 come up with anyway because people people actually have most of the stuff figured out for themselves they just don't realize it and they just kind of give us the clues and we can kind of take in the last couple steps. But uh, it's still fun. And plus it's even more fun when we get uh, other people who are listening in you know, giving their, their, their little, you know, kibitzes like, oh yeah, well, here's what, here's the other thing you can do. You can do this, you can do that. <laughs> it makes right. it even more fun when that right. happens. And I also wanted to tell you about something too. Uh, I had a, uh, text conversation with one of our listeners and, um, she was describing some stuff that she's going through and it occurred to me that we really need to develop some kind of method for people. I mean, they already get this through the Facebook uh, group anyway, because we're live streaming as usual to the, uh, Law of Attraction Changed My Life group. And and they get this because, they, I mean, any time that you post there, you're going to get 100 people responding to it. So, you know, it's not like there's there's any lack of advice. But nevertheless, I mean, I, I just get the feeling that there is a need for something a little bit more personal, a little bit more uh, direct to the person involved instead of, you know, like little, little quick uh, five-second answers. Um, and I got that impression from this text conversation I had because... Um, it was pretty clear to me what the person needed is something that a lot of us need. And that is we need the ongoing reminder throughout the day to focus on what we want and to stop focusing on all that negative crap we don't like that we keep focusing on habitually because it's a habit, you know? I mean, uh, I, I think it's actually a little bit easier when you're younger because you just haven't built up as much negative momentum over the years like you have when, you've, when you're older. <laughs> But but either way, almost at any age, it, you, you sometimes need that help. You need you need a little support, right? You do. You need reminders. Yeah, you do. So that's why I have that's why I have Louise Hay calendar pictures all over my house with affirmations on them. Literally, all oh, good over move. my house. There's little you know snippets of affirmations, and mm -hmm. you know I'm happy. I'm taking care of my healthy body now, so I can live long, and you know all these little sayings all over my house because I know you need reminders. You do. And, you know you get so sidetracked with life and focused on what you're doing that you forget. Oh, I just have to be happy. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And by the way, Jeffrey is already. Uh, um, cued in with, with his claim. He's a kibitzer. So, you know, we, we have somebody who is admitted to being a serial kibitzer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and a faithful follower. And a faithful follower. Absolutely. Show. Thank you. Hi, Jeffrey. <laughs> it's nice to have you back. Even though we haven't met in person, it's, I feel like I know you since you've been on the show several times. So, hi. <laughs> and also, hello is from uh, January as well. She said she appreciated last week's talk. And so, yes, we, we're, we appreciate you too, January. It's, it's great whenever you come by to join us on the show. Um, so anyway, on, on that theme, I want to tell you about an idea that I had. See what you think of it. See what our listeners think okay. about it. Great. I was thinking that it's kind of like the buddy system. You know, when you're learning to swim or whatever, they, they, they'll, they'll match you up with somebody else and you're, you're, you're each other's buddy and you're watching out for each other. And, you know, if, if one of you gets in trouble, the other one waits for the lifeguard and all that kind of thing. Well, a buddy system seems to me a reasonable way to do um, helping people stay on track on, on where they want to be to. You know, you, you have your buddy to check on you and see how you're doing and give you a little uh, props and positive feedback. You know, you know, you say something with a slightly negative uh, twist to it, and they say, well, you could always think of it as, and put it in the more positive twist. So with that idea in mind, I came up with the phrase pivot pals, kind of like pen pals, but pivot pals. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love pivot pals. I love it. That's great because I always tell my husband pivot to the positive. Yeah, you know, I'm 
That's it. And my daughter forget it, you know. But I, I think that's great. I think that's great. Pivot pals. I love it. I, I think that's a great idea. I think finding the right person to do it with uh, might be challenging. I mean, obviously, if you have a spouse, that would be a good person to start with, I yeah. think. Oh, sure. I'm going to talk to my husband and ask him if he'll be my pivot pal. <laughs> Will you be my pivot pal? That's a great question. <laughs> yeah, I love it. But for some people who don't, some people don't have somebody like that to go to. And that's why I was thinking maybe what we need to do is kind of turn this into a, like a semi organized thing. So I wasn't really sure where to go with it, but I've set up a uh, Facebook page, Pivot Pal or Pivot Pals actually. And I've also set up a group, Pivot Pals as the, is the name of the group as well. So there's two different places. And so I'm going to ask listeners, you know, if this is something, if you're on Facebook and it's something you might like to pursue, just go to the Pivot Pals page. Um, I'll put a link into the uh, the chat here too, um, but uh, for you know for people who are listening live to the uh, to the broadcast in the Law of Attraction Change My Life group, but just do a search on Pivot Pals, and I'm sure it'll come up because there aren't all that many Pivot Pals out there. No, <laughs> I mean there at, sure. there actually is one use of it. I found it. Um, apparently, uh, pivots are a kind of table that you can use in in uh, programming with Excel spreadsheets. So there are Pivot Pals for that, but it's a pretty limited thing. So you won't have any trouble finding it. I don't think. Um, but, uh, you know, if okay, it's something, so I, if it's something that I someone's interested in, pals, and there's a picture of two hands holding together, that's the one that that's the that's one yours. Yep. Nice. I mean, I didn't do a, a, a really big thing. I, it was just a little quick thing that I threw together, but at least you can identify it and you can know what it is and, you know, like the page and, and click the uh, send a message button. So you can send a message saying, yeah, you want to be a part of it. And I don't know exactly what we're going to do with it. I just figure let's get the thing started and see what kind of response we get and, you know, take it from there. Yeah, that sounds great. I'm going to ask my husband to be my pivot pal because that'll be the easiest. And if he doesn't want to do it, then I'm going to go back here and get somebody else to be my pivot pal because I think that's a great idea to just check in with each other every now and then. And Or the other thing, too, is if you recognize that you're – being negative or you're feeling upset or feeling frustrated or, you know, just down in some way, you can reach out to your pivot pal and say, Hey, exactly. I, I, this sucks. Life sucks. Or, (laughs) you know, whatever, whatever you're feeling. The life sucks call. (laughs) That's great. Yeah. And well, that's also why, that's why I set up the, um, uh, the group as well. I set up a a group with the same name. I'll even get that uh, link if I can here. Um, yeah, here we go. Uh, but I figured the, the group is a way for people to kind of self-serve to, you know, everybody who's in the group knows what they're there for. So, yes, you can stay out of my water, Harmony. My cat wants to drink my water. <laughs> but anybody can just go to the group and, and everybody knows what they're there for. So it's like looking for somebody and, you know, seeing if there's somebody there you want to um, connect with to, yeah. to, to do that kind of support thing. So I figure one of those two ways, maybe both of them will work out. So. I will put that into the, let's see, I got to get the link. I will put that into the chat in the. Yeah, I need to do a buttonwood group, I think. You should. Why don't you have one? I just haven't set it up yet. I just, you know, I don't, I don't know my way around Facebook all that well. And, Uh, uh, but someone said you should do a Facebook group and I, I just haven't done it yet. I'm not even sure how to do it, but I, I should just look at it and I'll probably, probably be able to figure it out. I'm sure. Right. It's not that difficult. I mean, they, they make it. You know, pretty easy for the average person to figure out. So it's not like you have okay. to be a, a rocket scientist or something like that. But uh, okay, so I'm I'm going to get the right link. I tried to put the link in. I actually put the wrong link in. So here's the right link. There we go. Okay, so now we got the group link in there too. Um, okay, so, cool. Um, oh, uh, Jeffrey likes the idea. He says genius, and he says I volunteer to Anne Marie. Well, you have a volunteer, <laughs> Anne Marie. Oh, okay, thank you, Jeffrey. <laughs> Jeffrey, Jeffrey wants you to, wants to be your your, your pivot pal. <laughs> okay, thank you. and you know, I bet it wouldn't hurt to have more than one pivot pal. It probably is a good idea. Yeah. yeah. So, all right, Jeffrey, you and I, we're on. All right, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so good stuff. And uh, also, this is a Q and A, so that means you know, if you have any questions, or maybe you have a, a win you want to share, something that's worked out for you, where you've attracted something, or or maybe just a, you know, a story you want to tell that that's a good story, or or just anything that you want to ask about, though, that's what we're here for tonight. We're here to answer questions and to get into the spirit of uh, being a pivot pal by 
answering questions, seeing what we can do to help cheer you up or get you into that better place or help you turn it around, find that negative phrase and turn it into a positive phrase, whatever it takes. Well, we're, we're here to do that for you. Um, and I've, I have to say I've had plenty of experience with needing that for this week. Um, I, I have made a few references uh, obliquely, and I'm still not ready to go into it in detail, but um, Anne-Marie, you know, Louise has been dealing with uh, some medical issues, and uh, we have gotten some uh, resolution on the, the medical issues. We know have, we have a better idea of what we're dealing with. It's not as bad as, I, as we were fearing, which is good. Um, but nevertheless, when you're going through it, you know how it is. When you're going through stuff, it, it's pretty tough because, first of all, she's someone I love so much. Second of all, I'm running the house now. She can't do anything, you know, so it's like it's all on me. And on top of that, we were closing down her business. I had to go close down her office on top of everything else. And, I mean, it, it was just a crazy, crazy week. So th- there were a few times where I would have said, what the bleep, 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 bleep. <laughs> I can't take this anymore. I'm mad as hell and I can't take it anymore. <laughs> so it would have been a good time to have a pivot pal. I can say that. Uh, let's see. What do we got going here? Oh, January has a question already. See, I tell you, this this thing happens really quickly. Um, January says, how do I get over fear? I guess I had a tough life. And I understand. I mean, we actually, I the person I was uh, chatting with on Facebook over the last couple of days has also had a pretty tough life. A lot of people have. The, the trick, I think, obviously, is to find where the positives are. But before I even get into my answer, you want to try to take a crack at Anne Marie? I mean, how do you how do you help January get over her fear? Well, the first thing I'd like to share with you is something I learned from Neil Donald Walsh in his wonderful, I highly recommend book series called Conversations with God. Mm, great series. And in it, he takes the word fear and he breaks it down into false evidence appearing real. Mm-hmm. So... I, the first thing I do when fear comes up in my life is I say, okay, this is just my perception of the situation. It's not necessarily what's real because it's just my perception of it. And it's probably not as bad as I think it's going to be. And I just need to focus on the positive. And like you said, you've got to focus on the positive. And that's not always easy to do. And so a lot of times if there's something that I'm fearing, which, um, I don't fear too much, but I worry more. So when fear comes up, I I try to um, uh, sort of just pray about it, give it up, and trust that it's going to be okay. And I focus on the thing that, I, that I'm concerned about or fearful of, and I see that in a positive light and try to keep that as positive as, as possible. And... Um, and, and the other thing that I say to myself a lot is from, uh, Abraham, Abraham Hicks, who says, everything is always working out for me. Mm -hmm. So if I think about it like that, if I think about it like, and and this may sound narcissistic, but it's not, uh, the the whole world is revolving around me (laughs) because (laughs) in my world, in my world, everything revolves around me. This is true. Right? In your world, everything revolves around you. This is very right? true. So if I can accept the idea that everything in my world is revolving around me, I'm going to put out there that everything is working out for me. Because I know I have lots of guardian angels and I have spirit guides and I have a lot of positive intentions that will, will help things to work out positively for me. So I know that the more positive vibes I put out, the more positive things that are going to happen for me. And lastly, I believe that fear or worrying is like praying for something you don't want. It's like because you're focusing your attention on something you don't want. And the more you're fearing it, the more you're thinking about it. And the more you're fearing it, the more you're feeling it. And the deeper your feelings are and the more passionate you are about that, the deeper that it's going to get into your subconscious and then manifest. So it's like, it's true. The only thing to fear is fear itself. Yes. (laughs) So you want to stay away from fear. Try to let go of it as soon as possible. Try to pivot to the positive. Try to trust. You know, give it up. Find, Find a... 
find your guardian angel or find your spirit guide or find a dead relative who you loved and trusted and knew that would take care of you. Maybe your grandmother or somebody who loves you and trusts you and, and, and wants to take care of you and speak to them if they're on the other side, you know, and have them help you. Mm -hmm. But you've got to find a way that works for you. You know, I can tell you what works for me. You've got to find some way that works for you and then keep going back to that and then maybe share that with your pivot pal and, you know, get a pivot pal and maybe share that with them because fear is, fear is very gripping on all of us and it's very debilitating. And the more you allow fear to take over you, the less life you're going to be able to live. So you got to, it's, it's like a vine that, that, you know, crawls all over you and smothers <laughs> you. You know, you've got to, you've got to cut it off, cut it away and just keep it away from you as best as possible. So I wish you the best of luck, January. And, and if I can be of any help, let me know. And she says, thank you. She's already posted her thank you. So uh, you're quite welcome. I, I just wanted to add that um, the person I was speaking with, uh, her issue was isn't exactly fear, but fear is behind it. And mm -hmm. I mentioned that because if you really look closely, and I think most therapists will agree with this, if you really look closely at what's going on in our minds, kind of in the background, whenever we're feeling a negative emotion of some kind, it invariably boils down in the final analysis to fear in some way. Even anger, yeah. depression, rage, hatred, uh, revenge, you know, all those feelings, they all boil down to fear. Being afraid of something, and, and because we're afraid of it, that we, we, we get into a negative space as a way to deal with it. It's a way of of um, just kind of coming to terms with whatever it is that we're afraid of. Uh, and the fear can be pretty deeply seated. You can, it, it's even possible to not realize what it is you're afraid of. Um, so sure. the first thing I'd recommend is congratulate yourself for recognizing that you're afraid. That's actually a good thing. You recognized the truth. That is good. You recognize a very good. important thing. And then the second thing, like Anne Marie said, and I agree with you completely, Anne Marie, recognize that it is false evidence appearing real. That, that's actually a term that they also use in 10 step or 12 step groups rather that, uh, that oh, idea of false evidence appearing real. Yeah. It get it gets a lot of play there. Um, mm. because I mean, when you're dealing with an addictive substance of some kind, that fear is a huge portion of it. One of the re main reasons that the people drug or drink or whatever it is that they do to you know abuse, whatever to feel better is to feel better. And most often it's because they've got some kind of pain, either psychic or physical or mental or emotional or some kind of pain going on that they want to numb. That's what most of the, the addictive substances are for. They're for numbing pain. And why do you have the pain? The pain is usually associated with something you're afraid of. So, you know, absolutely. Yeah, you're, you're... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I think everything comes either from fear or pain at its mm -hmm. basis. So yeah, it really does. I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. And so what does it take to turn it around? <laughs> As strange as it might seem, you stop focusing on the fear and you start focusing on what you want. And and that's exactly what I was wrestling with today, literally wrestling with that, because I've, I've been dealing with so much that was frustrating me. Frustration was my uh, negative emotion for the week. I was frustrated and, and even um, feeling hopeless at a few points, just because there, there was one point in the week where we were not really clear what was going on with Louise and we'd... Uh, she had gotten a doctor's appointment and gotten some information, and the information we got scared the, the living daylights out of us. I mean, just the, the doctor really spoke out of turn. Um, she was trying to be helpful, but she said something she shouldn't have said, and it just, oh, God, it was terrifying. But, oh. you know, even when when you're in that place, you're, you're still trying to figure out how to get back, how to get back to that good-feeling place. So that's that's actually where the impetus of Pivot Pals came from, that plus my conversation with one of our listeners over the weekend. So, mm -hmm. and Lynn has already said she signed up. So Lynn was first. Lynn, Lynn gets the gold star for being the first person to sign up. Oh, excellent. Yep. Excellent. And Yuki said that uh, she was interested and uh, Herbert was uh, saying a few things. Let's see. He said, uh, I do it by knowing that there is a reason I'm here to learn. Oh, that's how he deals with fear. That's an interesting way to deal with it. By knowing that you're, that yeah. you're here, there's something here for you to learn. That's a good idea. Yeah. 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 But really, it's anything that I you think, have to do to turn it around, to turn it into something that you like rather than something you don't like. Yeah. I think that we, I think the ones here on earth who face the biggest challenges, you know, people say, oh, I've had such a hard life in this and, and the like. I think those people uh, are to be commended the most because I feel like they gave themselves really big challenges to deal with. Yeah. In order to learn so much 
you know, it's like the deeper you go, the higher you can get. And I feel like we give ourselves challenges to learn from, give ourselves these difficult, That's right. difficult circumstances as opportunities to learn and to grow and evolve. And so the biggest hurdles are often the ones that are, uh, that are in people who are really have the most um, potential to grow. So if you've had a hard life, uh, commend yourself because you've got great potential. Yes, you just that's right. Beat, up, beat it, and you're going to do wonderful things and uh, be magnificent. Which is also true, by the way, for the person that I was chatting with on Facebook over the weekend. Uh, this person also has fabulous potential. I mean, go ahead gone through some amazingly difficult stuff but has done so much work on himself or herself actually and uh just you know lots and lots of potential it's just incredible so yeah it's great yep take 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 from the strength of it we have another question too and this one actually is maybe perhaps more in more in your wheelhouse Anne Marie, than in mine um lopez ann says can you please explain signs numerical lyrics photos um, up here, example, I'll talk about engagements and rings pop up on ads. My ex's birth date appears everywhere and my ex's birth date appears everywhere and these signs have appeared for months. My question is, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to take action on something? I haven't seen any results in what I've asked for, even if it's a phone call, but the signs are just there and they give me hope at the beginning, but now all the signs are frustrating me in a negative way. What do you think? Well, um, so oh, I... I kind of feel like I need a little bit more. Is there, so it sounds like you asked for something and you haven't gotten it yet. And it, you're seeing a sign that is somehow related to it. Your ex's birth date or something is it, related to that. Yeah. It almost sounds like there's something to do with, with her ex. Like uh, she wants the ex back right. or she wants to reconnect or something like that. I mean, she doesn't say that, but that seems to be where it's going. Right. Uh, so maybe she can give us a little bit more. I mean, in general, I, I, I can tell you that. You, if you ask different people about signs, you'll get different answers. Um, for sure. instance, with Linda Armstrong, who does the Friday afternoon podcast with me and Carlos Balasquite, um, Linda will, will actually give you places where you can go online to look at like angel numbers and find out what the number, look up a, any different number combination and see what it's telling you. Um, and uh, she's also big on, on signs and reading cards and all that kind of thing. And uh, Emery, I know you're big into numerology, so uh, you could talk a little bit more about that. Um, but I, I think you'll get different answers no matter where you look. I think the real question is, what do they mean to you? Because ultimately you can get all kinds of answers from everybody, but it really comes down to what does it mean to you? What, what, what does it make you feel inside? What, 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 right. the, what does the sign tell you? How does it resonate with you? You're seeing all these signs everywhere. What does that tell you inside? Because you've got the answers. We all have the answers inside. It's just a question of learning how to read them. I mean, is that, is that your take? I mean, what do you, what do you think about it, Anne-Marie? Well, I think that, um, I was just looking up this quote that I heard today. I'm going to, I'll read to you in a minute. Okay. I think that, and I actually was thinking about this the other day because when I was in third grade, I won a contest by guessing the number 15. And ever since then, I've noticed, and it didn't even start happening until I was in my, an adult, <clears throat> but I noticed that when good things started happening, somehow the number 15 was involved. So now I've made number 15 my, my, you know, my lucky number, so to speak. And now I see it wherever I look. I see 15s, <laughs> you know, everywhere. So I think sometimes you get fixated on something and then you see it everywhere. And that's because your subconscious is fixated on it. So it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. You, you're seeing them because it's a you're good point. noticing them more. Yeah. Now, it, it's and also it it's, it's also true that it's physiological too, I, and I forgot to mention that I thought about that and I forgot about it. But um, we have something at the base of our brain, our brainstem, uh, that has the acronym ARAS, and I, I can't remember what it is exactly. And, and and I I can't remember what the A is, but the RAS is reticular activating system, and and what it does is it it's it's part of what they call the monkey brain. It's the the fight or flight part of the brain, the, the very much reactive kind of brain, but it's also a filtering mechanism. And the way it works is the, the human brain can only process a certain amount of information at any given time. If we had to process all the information that comes in through all five of our senses continuously, we would be autistic. We, there's so much information coming in, we, we would not be able to handle it. 
So the ARAS filters it down to just those things that we have looked at most recently on the theory, if you will, that that's what we want to spend more time on. So it's the phenomenon often hurt, happens with like getting a car, like you get a car for the first time and you, you go out and you pick up the car from the car dealer and then you're driving and all of a sudden you see that model and that color and that year car everywhere. Why? Because you're focused on that car. And your ARAS is programming you to say, yes, I'm going to let all the information in about that particular car. <laughs> it happens all the time. So that is part of it. It's, it's physiological in addition. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, so I wonder if that... Uh, well, Lobazan actually gave us some more... She gave us some more information. She said, yes, she was. she's uh, asked for a phone call from her ex. Um, she's looking for reconciliation. She laughs about that. And she says she asked angel numbers and she sees the number 38 everywhere. And her ex was 38 years old when he dumped her. He's now 39. So I'm wondering why I keep seeing 38. <laughs> That's an interesting question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, because you're resonating with 38. Somehow. Yeah. I mean, there was That's something it. that you resonated with 38. Now, you, now you're seeing it for exactly what the reason Walt just said, probably. But sometimes you just have to be patient and and wait and stay hopeful if you want, you know, want a phone call. And my, my question would be, why don't you just call him? Is that possible? Interesting question. Why does, why does he have to be the one to call you? It's, I don't good, know. it's, it's a good one. I mean, it, it's one that uh, I think a lot of people should try to answer that one. Cause especially not so much in this group, but in the, uh, there's another group, baby elephants, law of attraction group, lots and lots and lots of young women posting very similar questions to this one. How do I get my ex back? What's it going to take? He doesn't call me all this other kind of stuff. And you're right. That'd be a great response for all of them. Why don't you call him <laughs> instead yeah, of trying to get him to manifest a phone call or something? Right. I think a lot of guys are maybe, um, they don't want to be rejected again. I, I don't know. I have no idea of the circumstances, but I just know sometimes guys don't want to be rejected again and they don't want to, you know, they don't want to, they just don't want to get hurt again. And so they don't want to keep going. But if the woman is more, um, a, you know, if she's more willing to say that she's sorry and she wants to make amends, then he might be more willing to, too. Yuki actually po threw a little cold water onto it, but uh, she pointed out quite accurately, if he blocked you, then maybe that's your answer. And that can also be true. I mean, the simple fact is we are oh. all free agents, you know? I mean, he, he apparently he dumped her, and uh, she's trying to get back with him, but he may have permanently moved on. That's that's quite possible. And that's possible, too. Yeah. That's possible, too, in which case you've got to look for the bright side. And you've just got to move on and you got to realize that every relationship is there for you to demonstrate who you are and you can learn from every relationship you're in. And Very just true. because it didn't last as long as you wanted it to last doesn't mean it was a failure of a relationship. You know, relationships, uh, they have varying lengths and the length of a relationship doesn't determine its, its quality or its value. So you might have to be moving on and uh and next time you'll find someone even better you know take the qualities that you liked about that relationship or that person and say yes i like that yes i liked that yes i like that and just look at the yeses look at what you liked and go next next relationship i have is going to be even better it's going to be all of that and more and yep. you know maybe it's time to move on and and that happens and, a lot too i mean very often when when a relationship doesn't work out it usually means there's something better coming I mean, unless mm -hmm. you get yourself into a really bad negative pattern where you're attracting only negative relationships, um, it's going to, it's very often that you're going to attract something better because you've already increased your wish level, your, 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 your number of criteria that you're looking for. And, right. you know, just the fact that, uh, the other person said it's time to move on was maybe that was the universe's way of saying, come on, get him out of the way. I got another one coming for you. <laughs> maybe, you know, that can happen. Possible. Absolutely. I, I had to go through, God, I don't know how many, what I would have called failed relationships. You pointed out there's really no such thing as a failed relationship, but I, I couldn't even call them relationships. I don't think any of them lasted more than two weeks. There was one that lasted a month, and that went on for about 20 years, and then I met Louise. We've been together for 20 years since then. You know, were, were each of those leading up to Louise? Yeah, I, I can actually see that pattern now. Could I see it in, in the middle of it? No, no way. <laughs> it felt like I was in hell. But... Looking back at it, I can see, yeah, actually it all added up to getting things ready so that when Louise came into my life, it was the right person. There you go. Yep. Yeah. 
There you go. And it looks like, uh, oh, Mopa Zan is giving us a lot of thank yous and smiles and, yeah, lots and lots of smiles. So, yeah, I, I think we scored a few points with that one. That's good. <laughs> okay, good. That's good. That's good. <sighs> oh, y- Yugi posted an interesting uh, thing. She said, I think that those of us who learn from the challenges are given the harder tests because we are capable of, we are more capable of passing the tests. There hmm. you go. I agree. I agree. I agree, and you've, you know, you've given yourselves those bigger challenges. I, I believe that we, before we come into this lifetime, we, we write a plan out for our lifetime. We figure out what we want to achieve, and we put people and circumstances and situations in our life path to give us those opportunities to grow. And uh, I've had too many experiences in my life that have, that have proved just that, to believe otherwise. So uh, I, I heavily believe that. So and I, I think that um, that we, we put those challenges there. And, and like you said, you're capable of it. You may not think you are, but you're capable of it. So just keep moving on. She also had, Yuki had a couple other comments uh, on the subject. She said, I manifested my ex recently, and I was looking for clarity and closure, and I believe I got it. So good for nice. her. You know, not too many nice. people will, will, will go try to get an ex back for the purpose of closing it out and feeling like they have closure, but she did, and good for her. And she said it's only a failed relationship if you don't learn from it, which kind of ties into That's the right. test theme that she was talking about. So, yeah, good on you, Yogi. Yeah. That was really good. Very good. Very good. So it looks yeah. like the, the questions have kind of uh, slowed down here, but I'll give people a little more chance to – to ask some questions and in the meantime oh i should also do our announcements we, we should do the announcements around this time anyway um but uh and i'm going to have to add to them now that now that we got pivot pals um so if you want to be uh, involved in the pivot pal uh, program i put in the links for both the group and for the page in the comments section here of today's podcast uh during the live streaming portion here on law of attraction change my life group and if you are interested, you'd like to be a part of that, uh, do one or the other. If you just want to send a private message, then use the page for that. You'll see a little send message button that's on that. Um, if you want to be part of the group and kind of be self-selecting and decide who you want to hook into by yourself, um, then, you know, join the group. And I'm sure that uh, as the group grows, people will start pairing off or maybe even doing more than pairs. I mean, it might be, you know, like you said, Marie, Emery, maybe it's more about finding a number of people that you can connect with so that at any given time, you know, you can reach out and see who's available and get that person to help you because that person happens to be available this time. It might work right. that way. Right. Right. So is there a, a, a way, like how are people connecting? Like for me, the, the best way would be either – a Facebook message or a text. Uh, those would be like my two preferred ways of connecting. How well, is there anything set up or, or is it just going to be every individual? Uh, connecting to your, your pivot pal. Do you mean? Yeah. It's a good question. I, I mean, literally I, I spent about an hour thinking this out. So this has not had a whole lot of pre-planning involved. <laughs> this is, this yeah. is a very much of a nascent idea. It's very new. And how is it going yeah. to work out? I don't know yet. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of feeling our way to see what happens. And maybe that's another reason to join the group so that we can have a little discussion about how we want this thing to work. You know, because I don't want to have to be the person who says, well, this is the way we're going to do it, you know, because I may come up with a method that doesn't work for everybody. I'd rather find out what other people want yeah. to do. So yeah. maybe that's what we do first. You know, if you're interested in the concept, join the group first. And again, I put the link in the, the comment section for those who are listening live. I'll also put it into the um, description where we post this after the fact. Um, but you know, join the group first and then uh, participate in the conversation. Say, okay, how are we going to make this thing work? And we'll figure it out. You know, my, my job was to come up with the concept. Now it's, it's everybody's job to figure out how, to, how it's going to work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've done my part. You know. All right. <laughs> All right, well, Jeffrey, we'll have to figure that out. Like you heard, I you know, Facebook message might be that might be a good way. I'm gonna try to go on to this group now. Let's see if I can even find it. But anyway, oh yeah. Interesting uh, message. Funny. Interesting message from Herbert. He said, um, I, I I think the he was using Siri or something, and the the uh, translation didn't quite work. I think what he's saying is he lost a job, but he lost it because it was time. Three days, the universe won't let me get up in the morning. During the day, I was good, but in the morning, I couldn't get up. 
and it forced me to do something I needed to do. So he's talking about how adverse circumstances actually become kind of a, a goad, kind of a way to push it to, into action. That's something that Joel Elston would really identify with because he's, he's a big believer yeah. in struggle. And uh, I, I think right. he, has, he has a lot on, uh, of good argument on his side for that. So, yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, personally, I, I, I think that most of us probably would prefer not to do it with a struggle if we, if we could avoid it. But sometimes, sometimes struggle is what it takes. Sometimes we just need that little bit of a wake up that comes from a situation where we're struggling just to get ourselves off the, the, the spot that we've been on all this time and start taking a different set of action. Um, one of the things that, that's really important that I think about the law of attraction is that it's based on thoughts and feelings. And we have, so, there was a researcher who, who noticed that like 90 to 95% of the thoughts that we have every day were the exact same thoughts as we had the previous day, which kind of makes sense, yeah. you know? So it means that we're going to keep manifesting the same kind of stuff over and over and over again. <laughs> if we're going to manifest different things, different relationships, different job experiences, you know, different money situations, different health, you know, whatever it might be, we got to change the thought process and we got to change it fairly radically. Well, struggling right. with something is going to make us do that. So right. I, I think that's, that's a good argument in favor of, of struggling with things. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I liked, um, Neville Goddard was talking about not thinking, uh, of, a situation that you want to be in, but co like coming from that situation that you want to be in. So if you want to be in a relationship with a person, feel yourself coming from that situation, mm. not like you're going to that relationship. Like I can't wait to have that relationship. Uh, but f feeling like you already have it and, and acting as though you're coming from that situation, which mm -hmm. I think is a lot harder, but. Well, it, it certainly fits in with the idea of uh, assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled, which is the Neville right. Goddard line. And it's I think a lot of it has to do, uh, in, in terms of your success, it has to do with where you're at emotionally. I think Neville, Neville, again, was a stage actor. And he was very good at adopting, like, uh, they didn't actually have the method yet. Method acting didn't come along until, like, the late 50s, early 60s. But... A good actor still probably used the method to some degree without even realizing what they were using and without having a name associated with it. And as a result, he was good at adopting um, an emotional stance, so to speak. And he was successful as an actor, by the way. He wasn't a failed actor who just fell into this other thing because he couldn't make acting work. He actually made good money as an actor. Um, mm -hmm. so, so he was good at it. He, he was good at his profession. And I think mm -hmm. that it influenced the way that he put together his... Um, his, his, the things that he was teaching. So he kind of assumed, probably not entirely fairly, that anyone in his audience could, like he could, just on demand get himself into a good feeling place because that's what an actor does. Um, but right. most often we don't always do that. I mean, most people have trouble with it. I have trouble with it. I don't know about you, but I have a lot of trouble. If I'm in a negative place, a really bad place, climbing out of it can be tough. Um, so the Neville approach works when you're in a good feeling place. When you're in a right. not good feeling place, it works like a boomerang. <laughs> it works the wrong way. <laughs> so yeah. yeah no, you got to get yourself back to balance before right. back to alignment before you can do anything. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, so I have two. I have two questions. One is, uh, did you post a link to the Pivot Pal group on? Yes. The Okay, yes. and where did you post that? Uh, I posted it in the comments section of the Law of Attraction group. Let me, I, I can probably get it again. Oh, in the comments. Yeah. Okay. I'll just post it again right here. Yeah. Uh, uh oh, hold on. Somehow I, when I hit, <laughs> when I hit comments, the, the, okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting, you're getting the recording on a loop. <laughs> I'm getting the recording. Oh, I just muted it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We haven't had that before. That's interesting. <laughs> okay. All right. My other question is, um, I, it's actually, I'd like to ask for permission to read something by uh, Pierre Tilhard de Chardin. Sure. And this was something that my pastor read in church this morning, and okay. it was quite apropos for my scenario at home. And I think it, it might help... Uh, that woman earlier who was talking about the relationship problem. And ah. I think it's just a great quote. Okay. Basically it's talking about having patience. Can, can do we have time for me to read that? Yeah, sure. We've got lots of time. Go ahead. Okay. All right. 
It says, above all, trust in the slow work of God. We are quite naturally impatient in everything to reach the end without delay. We should like to skip the intermediate stages. We are impatient of being on the way to something unknown, something new. And yet it is the law of all progress that it is made by passing through some stages of instability and that it may take a very long time. And so I think it is with you. Your ideas mature gradually. Let them grow. Let them shape themselves without undue haste. Don't try to force them on as though you could be today what, <clears throat> what time, that is to say, grace and circumstances acting on your own goodwill, will make of you tomorrow. <clears throat> That's an interesting sentence. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Don't try to force them on as though you could be today what time will make of you tomorrow. That is to say, grace and circumstances acting on your own goodwill. Hmm. Only God could say what this new spirit gradually forming within you will be. Give our Lord the benefit of believing that his hand is leading you and accept the anxiety of feeling yourself in suspense and incomplete. Okay. There you go. That's Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. Very good. Okay. Um so, I think I'd want to add one thing to that because he talks about patience. And the one thing I've learned about uh, from what Abraham teaches is that the only time we ever are dealing with patience is when we're not in a good feeling place. Because if you're in that good feeling place, stuff's flowing. It's just all coming great. Um, but it is worthwhile to remember the idea of patience when you're not feeling good. Not with the the idea of staying in the not feeling good space, but simply as a way of remembering Oh, yeah, well, that's why it hasn't shown up. I've just not been in a good feeling place, and I've been doing it fairly chronically, you know? So, and, well, that, of, yeah, course it, of course it's taking a while, you know? That's, that's just <clears throat> what's happening. Um, and I can speed it up anytime I, I'm really willing to do what needs to be done, which is to really take all the steps, do all the processes, whatever, until I'm chronically living in a happy place. And when I'm doing that, all of a sudden everything will just start flowing in. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think the other thing that I... I remind myself often of is everything will unfold in divine time. I call it divine time because <laughs> I, I, I want it to be out of my hands. And I trust that it's in the hands of somebody who's more wise, whether it be the universe, God, whomever, it's just going to happen in divine time. And sometimes we have to get ready for it to happen. Sometimes we're not, we're just not there yet you know, for it to happen. And so that's true. It's tricky for us to stay positively focused the entire time that we're waiting for that thing to manifest. But yet that's what we need to do. And because life is the way it is, a lot of times we go back and forth and back and forth. And now you're up and now you're down and now you're facing positive and now you're facing negative and you go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. But as long as you stay fo focused positively, for long periods of time, as much as possible, and right. you keep staying positively focused, then you give it, you give the universe the opportunity to manifest the thing that's supposed to be coming your way. I think every time we go back and forth and back and forth, we actually kind of hinder the progress of it. And I think that's part of our own growth because we're not growing sufficiently to warrant the thing that's happening or not necessarily to warrant it, but just to allow to it. Be able that, that, that's to where allowing comes to in. To allow it. Yeah. Right. To allow it properly. Right. To exactly. allow it fully. Yeah. No, I think yeah. it's true because we, we have a lot of different ways we resist things. <laughs> We're very good resistors. We, we are stellar resistors. <laughs> we, we have invented more ways to resist than people thought they could possibly invent. Um, and, a lot of them just take, it takes, it isn't so much that we're waiting for stuff to show up. It's not like we're being patient with the universe. I think what we're actually doing is we're learning to be patient with ourselves because we have these, these wishes, which we often make from a position of lack, you know, the, these wants that we start yeah. from lack and well, lack in and of itself is a resistant position. So we're starting from a resistant position to ask for the thing that we want. The thing is actually almost delivered. It's actually, it's, it's right there, according to Abraham. We just have to let it in. And the rest of it is us just trying to figure out how to let the darn thing in. 
<laughs> which is tough because we're attached to it. The fact that it isn't here yet. Oh my God. When is it going to come? And, oh, we, and, and what makes matters worse is that we're also really rough on ourselves about it. That's been a theme that I've harped on this week. How rough we are. We're really tough on ourselves. We beat ourselves up so easily. You know, oh, I can't believe this happened. Or, oh, I can't believe I did that. Or, ah, oh, all this stuff. And you know, we just, and, and every time we do that, we're putting ourselves into more and more of a resistant place. <laughs> We are so it's good true. at resisting. We are so, so good at it. So it's I think that's true. where the, the patience isn't so much with the universe. The patience is with ourselves. We have to be patient with ourselves. Allow ourselves to grow in the way that we can grow. I mean, maybe we can't get there immediately. Maybe we can't get ourselves into that happy place as fast as we want to. So we get there as fast as we can. And, you know, if we don't get there what our preconceptions said it should be, then we cut ourselves some slack. And when we do, no, we get there quicker. Very important. <laughs> yeah. Very important. We need to be kinder to ourselves and, and mm -hmm. not be so tough on ourselves. And I think we tend to be impatient with the universe, but it's, it's truly we're not patient with ourselves being. Really? Because we think we're being good. I think a lot of times we think we're being good, uh, and we're just we're not fully good. We're not really in the vortex or really aligned and and we think that we are just because we haven't been yelling or screaming or or you know super angry or super mm -hmm. frustrated or something but even just a little bit is too much mm -hmm. you know even if you're out of alignment a little bit you're out of alignment and it's like you've got to be in that flow or you're not in it mm -hmm. and you can't connect with what you want if you're not in it I don't remember where the lecture was from. It was an Abraham uh, workshop, but they were talking. I, th I think actually it may have been a, a dialogue with Wayne Dyer. There was a conversation with Wayne Dyer that they recorded and published. I think it may have been from that, but it was, I was listening to this recently, and they, they made a very interesting point. They talked about how um, we can get we, – we talked about signs before. We can get signs. We can get um, inspirations or what seem like uh, inspired ideas and so forth. And they don't work out. And at the time that we received them, they seemed particularly strong. And so we said, oh, this has got to be the real thing. And so we go with it, but it still didn't work out. And Abraham points out, it really depends on what you were feeling at the time you got the sign. If you were feeling really, really good, it was a truly inspired idea. It was truly source. It was your inner being connecting with you. But if you were in anything but the highest level, it was probably you buying into something because it was a strong sign rather than a, an inspired idea. In other words, it was something that was driven more by your lower vibration. Um, that's my way of saying it. So, so there, there are, they, they were saying they understand completely how it is we can kind of lead ourselves astray by following something that really isn't truly an, an inspired idea. But the clue as to whether or not it's truly inspired is how do we feel at the time that we receive it? So we just have to kind of take stock. You know, at the time we get an inspired idea, how are we feeling? If we're feeling really good, go with it. If we're not feeling so good, give it a second thought. Check mm. it out. No. Interesting. I'll yeah. have to try that. Yeah. And it makes sense when you think about it because if you're not in the best place, then you're going to receive ideas that are not in the best place <laughs> that match the vibration of where you're at. See, that's interesting because I always felt like inspired ideas came from a good place and were for your best, but maybe not. Well, it depends what you mean by an inspired idea. I think that's what their point was. Their point is it's not truly inspired unless you're feeling really good when you receive it. Right. So if you receive an idea and it's not when you're feeling really good, then it's not an inspired idea. It's not something that was inspired by inner being. It came from another source. It came another from... source. It came from your own thoughts. It came from your interactions with others. You know, somebody had something going on that they were excited about. You said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Let's do that. You know, it wasn't really a truly inspired idea because it didn't really come from within. It came from without. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I'm still getting used Ponder to that up. one. But but I like the idea because the the one thing I've been most concerned about for the longest time was being able to communicate with my inner being. I mean, I, I get jealous of some of my co-hosts. I mean, Wendy Dillard was incredible. I mean, she could have entire conversations with her inner being. And I'm just sitting there dumbfounded, like, how on earth does she do that? You know, Linda Armstrong, who just receives information like crazy. I mean, she's just, just 
it's instantaneous with her. And here I am. I, I feel like I'm a, a in, in preschool trying to figure out how to talk. You know? <laughs> but I'm along with you, Walt. are you okay? Well, as Wendy and Cindy and Linda and Patty and and Joel, many people have pointed out to me. We do get, all of us, we do get communications from inside. We just don't necessarily recognize what they are because those communications are emotional. So whenever we are thinking about something and it feels good, that's from inside. That's, that's the inside saying, yes, I agree with that thing. I am, I am in alignment with you. I totally am, I'm on board. And if we're not feeling good, that's our inside saying, I am not in agreement with you about this. There's something that we're disagreeing on. Mm-hmm. So there's communication right there. Now, yeah. it, it may yeah. not be full sentences, but at least we're getting communication. And that's right. the positive side, right? We're getting actual communication. Now it's up to us to learn to communicate on, on yes and no questions to get it started, right? I guess that would be a good place to start. Yeah. Well, when you, all you have is yes or no, you go with yes and no. Right? <laughs> it's just basic communication at that point. <laughs> Hmm. Have you ever tried the uh, like muscle testing for questions like that? Oh with yeah, your, with yourself? yeah. Linda does that all the time. She she's yeah, let, she let she let us through a few things. Guys, yeah, one time I was listening to you guys. I was in the shower and there I was like asking myself those questions in the shower. It was pretty funny. <laughs> Good for you <laughs> though. The way my body would move. <laughs> Good for you. That's great. That's great that yeah, you were trying it, that. It was so subtle though. I mean, I could actually feel it, but it was so subtle. It was tricky. By the way, Herbert uh, threw out something I wanted to uh, uh, add into our conversation we were just having. He says, we get locked down by the ideas of right and wrong. And oh, that's yeah. really true. I mean, talk so about true. talk about ideas that seem to be inspired ideas that really aren't because we're all locked into this right and wrong thing. Yeah, that'll right and wrong will lead you astray much more often than it'll lead you in the right direction. <laughs> Because yeah. you get caught up in, in all this tension and all this, oh, the angst and so forth. And that's not a positive place to be in. Yes. Yes. I was trying to explain that to my five-year-old granddaughter mm. <laughs> yesterday. That was tricky. <laughs> well, something else, about what's, something else interesting. Good. Here's another Abraham thought. Abraham was pointing out, I think in the same lecture or the same conversation, that when we bring kids into the world and they're very young, the adults feel like it's up to us to acclimate them and to teach them how things work. But as they point out, they're a lot closer to source than we are because they have not achieved the level of disconnect we've achieved. So we should actually be paying more attention to them. They have a lot to tell us, especially if they're really, really young because they're still really, really connected. Um, and, and sometimes they're not... I mean, we could ask them a, a point blank question about all this stuff and, and very often get an answer that says, go away, don't bother me, which is basically in Abraham's terms. That's the way of saying that's so obvious. Stop bothering me about something that's so obvious, even though it's not obvious to that to us. It's not obvious to them. And, you know, it's kind of a reminder, like, yeah, they really do understand. I mean, there, there was a here in the United States um, many years ago, there was a, a television program, say, that, that was said uh, that was called um, Kids Say the Darnest Things. First Art Link oh, Letter and then Bill yeah. Cosby, but it was it was just a wonderful program. And, and kids really do say the darndest things because they are so honest about that connection. They, they, they're, they're still getting a lot of their information from that connection. So yeah. th- there's a lot to learn from kids. Kids are wonderful teachers. We just have to learn to listen That's, to them. Yes, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yep. Well, we're getting a lot of yeses and exactly's and, uh, you know, people liking and so forth. So they're liking the conversation. What we're a little bit late on are questions. Um, we, we only have about five minutes left, so I'm not sure how much we could get into a question anyway. But, <laughs> but it's still good. We got a lot of people who have been listening and, and, and tuning in and so forth. So it's been successful from that perspective. Um, okay. I have a question. Okay. I have a question that kind of it bring, it comes up because of the earlier question about the X. Uh, I have a question, and I, I, I can't figure this out. I, I've i made peace with my ex-husband, and I we, we can talk occasionally when we need to about our kids and stuff like that, but I have no desire to get back together with him. I don't think I hold any angst against him. I think I've made peace with everything, and yet he's in a lot of my dreams, and 
I can't really tell if it's a bad way or a good way. It, it's not like really obvious that it's one way or the other, but yet he's just there a lot. And I'm like, why is he showing up in my dream so much? <laughs> Anybody does, have any ideas? Does he show up in your waking life? No, I mean, no. He, he isn't part of your no. thought processes at all? He's not part of the interaction with your kids or anything? No, I mean, very rarely, unless I happen to be talking to my son who lives with my, my ex mm-hmm. down in Florida. And, uh, you know, unless, you know, unless that comes up or I might say to my son, you know, tell dad I said hi or how's he doing or something like that, you know. But I don't think about him normally during the daytime. Well, just so, that, I mean, the fact that your son is is with his dad, that, that could be part of it because you have a very strong emotional connection with your son, anything that's going to be strong emotional is going to bring stuff like that up. Um, and, and again, from Abraham, Abraham points out that the dreaming process is really about, it's really about disposing of the stuff that's been on our minds. Uh, not necessarily thoughts, although thoughts are going to be part of it, but also the feelings, you know, the, the stuff that, that our passions are closest to are the things that we're going to tend to have elements show up in our dreams. And, and they also point out it's kind of like the disposal process. Like you have old stuff that you don't need anymore. So you're, 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 it's like your body's eliminating waste. Well, this is part of the waste you're eliminating in a sense. You're, you're getting it right. out of your system, so to speak. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not, I don't think it's anything to worry about. I, I think I'd say, well, thank you. Okay. I'm done with that. Ready to move on. But, you know, you, you oh, just, you just okay. let it go. I, I've never heard that. I like that. Yeah. Well, Abraham also points out that, um, and this is different from what even Neville says or, or what some of the other teachers say. They say that when we sleep, all of our law of attraction, attractive powers also go to sleep. In other words, we, we go into a completely quiescent state. And in that Yeah, quiescent... well, they say we pick up where we left off, but they also say that you can start over again when you sleep. Well, that's the point so... of, that's the point of the quiescence of it. The, the fact that, that, our, our attract, we don't attract anything when we're asleep our, because our, our conscious mind is no longer engaged in what we're doing. It's, right. it's in right. hiatus, so to speak. And because of that hiatus, it kind of allows the whole system to just kind of calm down and reset. It's like pushing the reset button. They use that phrase a lot. Pushing the reset button yeah. is what you do when you're asleep. Yeah. So that, like you said, when you wake up, you wake up refreshed and in a better, more positive frame of mind because you've gotten all the junk out of the way. Well, because of that same process, it's also clearing stuff out. It's a cleaning process and enables us to get our energy back. Hmm. So I think they're right about that. uh, There's a lot about it. I I have yet to find anything that Abraham says that I disagree with. Maybe I'm prejudiced, but I'm just impressed with what Abraham says. So I like Neville too. Don't get me wrong, but you know, yeah. So when they tell me something, I I listen. I like them both. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to keep learning more about Neville and yep. Abraham. Uh, I I still listen to uh, now and then, but not as much as I used to. I mean, I've spent years and years listening to Abraham like every day, mm-hmm. and I haven't heard a whole lot of new things from Abraham. Have you? Not a whole lot new, but then again, Abraham themselves will tell you that uh, they're happy to answer all of your questions, but it's always the same answer. So. Right. <laughs> The only thing I can tell you that's new, Louis tells me that the 17 second rule is now a 14 second rule. So 17 yes. seconds to manifest a new thought, he says it's now down to 14 seconds. I hadn't heard that from him. But nobody. that happened a year ago. Is that a year ago? Okay. Well, <laughs> new is a relative thing. They, they've been doing this for 35 years, Anne Marie. I mean, come on. <laughs> I know. I know. And in, in the I sense know. of an epoch, it, it, it's like a blink in time. So even that's not very much, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. But this has been great, and uh, we've actually uh, gone through the hour and, and just had a wonderful time doing it. So we want to thank all of the people who are listening live and also all of our regular listeners who listen to the podcast recording for tuning in. And Anne-Marie, it's been great. I, I, I've i loved doing this with you. I can't wait to do it with you again next week. Thank you. Me too. I'm really enjoying it. And uh, I thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I invite people to uh, to pick up our book. You're Absolutely. Your dose of happy. Yeah. You can find it on our through our Facebook page, I'm sure, mm-hmm. and, uh, or through an Amazon near you. <laughs> right, right, and it's also being sold at the Buttonwood Tree, I might add, which Excellent. is a, non- a nonprofit performing arts center in Middletown, Connecticut. You can check us out online at buttonwood.org. You can get the book that way. Excellent. All right. Uh, 
And let's let's get our pivot pals going. Yeah, That's exciting. Yeah, we'll start doing that this week and see who signed up yeah. and take it one step at a time. And in the meantime, all we'll right, say we'll, sign up. Absolutely. Meantime, we'll say that we'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.